I was just checking out how the uh, center board gets attached to the ballast keel. Now if you'll remember in episode uh, three of this season is when I actually made the center board. So I got to thinking that since I had the boat on the hoist from taking it off the trailer from the boat show, that while I had it on the hoist, I would uh, get the center board placed in there. Now mainly the reason for that is that the boat needs to be high enough that I can put the center board in from the bottom. So the amount that the center board distance is, is about 24 inches or something like that. So I'll have to jack the boat up uh, quite a bit. Um, at any rate, that's what we're going to do in this episode, is to get the center board trunk and get the center board into the center board trunk. But to get started uh, with the center board, uh, one of the things that I had uh, done when I was building the center board is I had already located this pivot hole in there. As I've been thinking about this hole, um, I was concerned that water could migrate in there and get into the wood. So what I thought I would do is either to seal that up somehow. Now this will be actually moving with the pivot um, in there, so I wanted to do something that uh, would make that a little easier. So what I have here is a piece of um, bearing stock, bronze bearing stock, that has a uh, half inch hole on the inside and five eighths on the outside. And then what I have here is a piece of um, half inch bronze rod that I'll use to uh, attach that. So what I need to do first is to enlarge this hole, which it is a half inch hole right now, and I need to enlarge it to uh, five eighths so that I can put that bronze bearing in there. And I'll do that by epoxying it in. And it actually is, um, looks like it's about an eighth of an inch bigger than actual, the actual pieces. So I may need to uh, get that centered and then trim off each side. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do is drill that hole and get that bronze bearing epoxied in there. I glued the bronze bearing in with some quick set epoxy. Now, even though it was quick set, I waited 24 hours so that it would really fully cure before I went in to trim off the bearing. And I trimmed that off using my belt sander. Uh, it didn't take very much because as I had said before, it was just about a 16th of an inch bigger. So I was really only grinding off about a 32nd of an inch on each side. Once I got that all cleaned up, then I gave it a good sanding and put a fresh coat of primer on there. And as I have used on the bottom side of the boat, I used Rust-Oleum's heavy metal primer. So now that I have had this primer dry overnight, I'm going to get started to put a uh, finish paint on it. Now I'm not going to use bottom paint on it because bottom paint allows moisture to get through the paint and into the wood, which is what you want to happen when with the Carvel planking, you want that wood to swell up. But we don't want the uh, center board to swell up anymore. So I'm gonna use topside paint. And I'm gonna to use Total Boat's uh, one part topside paint, which is a polyurethane paint. Now polyurethane really seals off the wood and does not allow uh, water penetration the way that bottom paint would. 
So in order to get this on, I'm going to put a couple of coats on. But before I do that, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, 220 grit sandpaper and uh, give it all just a really quick uh, sand to give it a little tooth for that paint to stick. Well, now I've got the uh, center board all painted up. I've got two coats of the um, top side paint on both sides. Uh, first thing that I need to do now is to measure the hole here to locate where I need to drill a hole on the ballast keel. So the center board is 42 inches uh, at its widest spot and the center board trunk slot is 43 inches. So that gives us a half an inch on each side of clearance. So if I measure over from the edge here, it looks like we're about three and a half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole then four inches uh, away from the edge of the slot. And then the bottom of it just needs, can be flush with the bottom of the keel. So if I go from the center there, it looks like we have three, three and an eighth, just a little, actually just a little strong of three. So that's the next thing to do is to go over to the ballast keel and uh, get those measured out. What I've done here is I have set this, uh, the boat on top of this timber and I line this timber up with the inside front or the, the um, four part of that slot. So I've now uh, marked where that is right here. So that way I can measure over uh, four inches that I want to go. And then at that point, we'll go up. Three, just a strong three, almost three and a sixteenth or so. There. Okay. All right, so now that I have that uh, spot marked, what I need to do is to counter bore a hole in there so that when I put uh, a washer and a nut on there, it's flush with the outside here. So what I've got is a half inch nut here and a washer, half inch washer. And so I need to counter board and I'm gonna use this spade bit that is um, just a little bit bigger than the washer to do that. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is to drill a little pilot hole in there so that the tip of this um, spade bit can go in there. Now that I've got that uh, counter bore in there, I'm going to finish the hole with a 5 8 bit, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Well, I've got the holes drilled on both sides and I've got uh, my bronze rod sitting in here. Now you've noticed when I was drilling that that I used a little WD-40 
on the drill bit. The uh, lead can be really sticky uh, and it can actually can seize onto the bit pretty easily so that WD-40 really helped it cut a lot easier. So now that I've got the bronze rod in here, you can see on the um, uh, starboard side, I have it nice and flush with the keel. So on this side now, I'm going to mark it. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it off. And then I'm going to put it in my drill press. And then I'm going to polish it a little bit so that it will slide in and out of that uh, bronze bearing nicely. And once I get that polished, then I'm going to put threads on both ends and then I'll be able to install the centerboard. Now that I've got the pin made, there's one more thing I need to do before I can install it into the boat. And that is I need to add a line to the top of the centerboard here so that you can pull the centerboard up and retract it. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use some uh, little screw eye and I have a stainless steel screw eye here. So one of the ways you can tell whether or not the hardware is stainless or not is whether it's magnetic. If I take this magnet here and I tap it on here, you can see that that is not magnetic as opposed to one that is steel. It sticks to it very easily. So stainless steel is non-magnetic. Now the line that I have here will easily fit through this piece of hardware. Uh, and it's just, you know, I, didn't, I don't need it to be too big because it does also have to slide in that centerboard slot. So I'm going to fasten this to the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to center the line here so that when the screw eye is in there, it'll be uh, positioned like that.
Now to determine how far the centerboard needs to extend down is clearly shown here in the plans. So what I did here is I extended it down to make it all there. He had, uh, Joe White had cut it off here because it didn't fit on his page. Um, so now I can measure that with my scale here, find the inch and a half. So if I measure that, it comes out to 22 inches. So it needs to come down 22 inches. And another way we could check it is with the angle that it is. So I put this on here. You can see that it comes down, it's 40 degrees. So this is 40 degrees. So now we'll go check it on the boat. So I've propped up the centerboard with a two inch piece of stock here so that I ended up with exactly 22 inches. Now the other thing we can do is to check the angle, which is exactly 40 degrees. So the next thing I need to do is to make the centerboard cap. And the plans show that that needs to be 5 eighths of an inch thick. So what I'm going to do is get some walnut stock, mill that down to 5 eighths, and um, get some varnish on them and get them installed. I've got the uh, pieces made here. So what I'm going to do is to hold this piece centered and then I'm going to mark the line about in the center of it, taut, like that. So that way I know that that's where the knot will need to be. And then I'm going to drill a hole about right there. Make a mark right there. Okay. That looks pretty good. I'm going to wait to fasten that down until after 
I have the boat down off of this hoist so that I can get inside of it safely. And I'll put it down with some uh, bronze screws uh, around the edge of it uh, so that it can be taken off if I ever need to get into the center board. So many of you have asked how you could get a print of the drawing that I did in the last episode. And what I've decided to do is to make it available as a free download for all of my Patreon members that are at the $5 a month or above. So if you're already a Patreon member, then you'll already be, have access to that download. And if you aren't a Patreon member, this would be a great time to join the support team and become a member. So it's only going to be available for a limited time only, just until November 1st. So if you're not a Patreon member at this point, uh, make sure that you do that before that runs out. This digital download will also have some instructions on how you can go and have it printed or in, and have it framed at the same time. I'll put some links in that uh, Patreon post. So that's it for this episode. So thanks for watching The Art of Boat Building. <laughs>